clear and you are audible sir okay so in first totally i have given some main topic which i want to cover that that what is i first discuss about the what is the green technology very briefly then what is the nanotechnology and how these two technology can first get together and give a new kind of work or new kind of science in the field of field of, in the field of science so new kind of technology and what is the advantage of this technology and why the nanotechnology where i am working mostly on the nanotechnology part is useful for green and sustainable development so and then i also state as i told that past present research work carry on in that direction i will a little bit and then i will say the main topic is that what is my contribution towards the green nanotechnology and what is our my aim as well as what is the want to do in whole world what want to do in that field so before i start uh, i just say that what is the green technology if i say this one so it is a <clears throat> green tech is generally called the environmentally friendly whatever we will do that should be the environmentally friendly so it can refer mainly in the energy so whatever mainly if we you all know about the energy problem the fuel cell pollution environmental all the problem due to the fuel fossil fuel burning all this stuff so we want to make ultimate our aim is to get to make a greener world so that we can take good breath without mask we can move any anywhere we can take a good air or we whatever the food we are taking that is we pure we are pesticides free so pure world pure kind of food we can take whatever the drink we are drinking in the world now if we all know that drinking water is a big problem although we have a lot of water sea water but drinking water is a big problem so we can how we can make a pure minimum the wastage and make a pure green water green green synthesis of the pure water so everybody can get and get pure water or some good made air pure water without uh, paying lot of money and uh, without paying a lot of money so basically green technology is the umbrella under which describe use of the technology science reduce human impact of natural environment so we want to go back basically we want to go back in the past where we all are the natural all natural thing is there not a artificial one and how nanotechnology will help that one that we will discuss today and green technology is area specific science most of the science mean everywhere we need some everywhere whatever the medicine we are using so let us assume in medicine we are use gloves every doctor he was using use and throw gloves the gloves is made of the some materials whatever materials i can say that is most of the plastic whatever now it should be the reusable either it is reusable but in medical practice we generally don't able to reuse this one so we have to think is some materials which is readily degradable so that it will not harm or make a pollution in soil or environment similarly in, in injection syringe if we see uh, talk about the medical uh, syringe just whatever the syringe we are using for the injection purpose the needle syringe both we cannot reuse but what we most of the time we cannot reuse we have to throw it but where i will throw i will throw in the basin no what i will throw that that is important how to reuse that one or how to regenerate some good product from the contaminated product similarly if we think about the battery we all use battery pencil battery nico whatever the lot of battery after using that battery what we will do we will throw it away say we will throw it in the wastage but you know that all the battery is made of the lithium most of the batteries are made from the lithium and lithium ion is not a very uh, not available like aluminum or sodium sodium is available lot of sodium is available in in, in earth lot of aluminum is also available in earth we can get the aluminum all this one but the amount of total amount of lithium is very much um, very less in compared to the what is we need so we think about that before throwing the batteries we think that can we take out the lithium from there and reuse the lithium and that time we need a nanotechnology with the help of nanotechnology and that will be the green technology so that no wastage minimum wastage at least we cannot say that no wastage but at least minimum wastage or maximum output or we can use it further similarly if we know that we all breathe and carbon dioxide will generate the every molecules of carbon dioxide has the time limit more than 100 years it is we it, it will stay in air more than 100 years so how we are all cutting trees 
there is only one alternative that which will take the most of the time the natural alternative is that whatever the carbon dioxide is generated it will use by by the trees to make his food and get the oxygen forget about the oxygen think about the oxygen only just only see the carbon dioxide if we don't have any meat if if we don't have any we let us assume we don't have any um, tree left so whatever the carbon dioxide will generate that will stay in air for more than 100 years and we can live maximum 80 years so we we are making lot of pollution lot of environmental uh, pollutant in air knowingly unknowingly forcefully unforcefully but whatever the we cannot stop breathing that is not possible but it will generate but what we can stop that we can also stop so that is the green technology we can say that whatever we can stop at least whatever we can minimize we can do it and is it in a very clean manner that is called then we get the successfully we get the successful to get the um, make our environmental greener and this is the green field and greener technology now next this is the goal given by the all over the world the human development center sustainable development to go make it sustainable so whatever we will do it is not for ours not it is for our child also so whatever affordable that in the number of there are different points zero hunger this is the not only all thing is the science related but every every one is related with each other if we see that nasal slide affordable and clean energy we we have fossil fuel right now we are using fossil fuel and this is a limited one and it gave lot of pollution so we need to do some alternative source of fuel and we have the energy so sunlight in rajasthan we know the whatever the lot of sunlight and bikaner we could make a lot of uh, in bikaner we already the solar plant is installed and it's working very good so this that is that is we can think it think in that way also if we think about the 10 number 10 the reduce inequalities so whatever the reduce inequality we should be equal life below water we have to think about that one so all this kind climate change clean water and number 6 if you see the clean water and sanitization so this is the different different field they have given but most of them whatever the we are talking about the affordable and clean energy which is highly related to our work life on land whatever the land that means the environmental friendly the uh, number 15 one and then sustainable number 11 sustainable cities or whatever the sustainable world we have to make and we have to responsible for this one so now if we think about the green technology there are five r is used so we have to reduce recycle refuse renew and responsible this is the five r is the key point of the green technology so first reduce we can reduce the fuel wherever it not needed we cannot use the fuel we should not waste whatever the we can minimize the waste that we can do it we can reduce this one energy con uh, consume consumption if we don't need light we should switch off the light if we don't need need any excess thing we have to reduce the excess one and wastage of clean water we should we should not waste the clean water you know that if you know that one in ro whatever the ro everybody are using now a ro reverse osmosis method to purify the clean water if we have the pure ro the efficiency is only the 30% maximum efficiency so if you take the 700 liters of water purified we throw 70% if it is a pure ro i am not talking about the non whatever the company they are saying it is not the pure ro system there is a mixture of system that i can show you but whatever if we have the pure ro system then we can take, take only the if we use 100 liter of water we get only 30 liter of pure water other will 70 liter we waste to the basin so we are wasting this in way so in that we can reduce the waste we should refuse at least refuse means we can we are easy thing is that refuse the plastic bags this is the in any easiest way and if somebody let us assume if somebody told you to go somewhere for take or a key and it is maybe less than half kilometer and if you want to take some bike or ski so you tell no i will not take bike i will go by cycle or by walk so you can refuse that one this is called the refuse 
then recycle that whatever I told that I have given the picture of the mobile batteries also mobiles whatever the mobile in the battery this is the electronic e-waste it is called the e-waste not only the plastic also e-waste battery we can reuse sorry sorry any problem okay we can reuse the battery that's lithium ion whatever the in mobile we are throwing in the uh, throwing uh, we are not using we can take out the lithium from there we can you reuse that lithium from there because lithium i am talking mostly of the lithium because this is the uh, most important of the waste most important one of the very important waste what we are doing now knowingly or unknowingly so we have and we have a limited source of lithium Till now, lithium ion battery, whatever who has developed the lithium ion battery, he got the Nobel Prize. It's very highly selected, highly specific field. Without lithium ion battery, we cannot survive. But we have to think that we cannot survive long time with lithium ion battery if we waste the lithium in such a way. We have to regenerate the lithium, reuse the lithium so that we can get more and more. And research is progressing in such a way that if we have to think about the alternative also of the lithium, then sodium, aluminium that are try to use that one. Similarly, the renew. Here, renewable energy is the wind power, water power, solar energy, biofuel, and wastewater. This is the source of the source which is greener, which has no pollution. If we have the biofuel, then no pollution will take place, but we will get the energy. Sunlight, we cannot control the sunlight. Sunlight will come in, no problem. Always it will get the sunlight, we will get the sunlight. But how we use the sunlight, this is non-toxic and non-polluted, but if we use the sunlight to create energy in Bikari in India now, if we know about that one, this uh, Kochi airport in Kerala, it's totally powered by the sunlight, means the solar energy. This is the first airport in uh, India, which is uh, totally con uh, totally controlled by the sunlight means solar energy power is there is there so in kind of this is the kind of thing we can do it and now responsible must we must be responsible we don't waste electricity we don't waste water we don't waste fuel and don't waste food this is the all response if we are responsible then we can go one step far, forward to make a green world greener world now if i this is the first I am talking about the green part and then I will talk about the nanotechnology. This is the, now it is the common technology. It evolving very fast. We are talking about the very fast energy part. Now, if we think about the both picture is the very recent picture. One is the conventional LED TV and another is the quantum dot stream LED TV. If you see the color quality of these two pictures, then this is maybe the uh, conventional LED TV's development 2010 maybe and now 2021. Now we are getting the more quantum dot or similarly the Samsung is using that one. So you can see the picture quality. The optical image is so clear. Everything is so fine. This is, is the uh, importance of the nanotechnology. Why we can pay the uh, optical property of this material and you use this one. So why it is important that matter, energy, and transit the university variety of interaction with each other? Now, what I call the nanometer is the nano means in ten to the minus cent nine centimeter is one nanometer. So to understand this one, a red blood cell is approximately 700, 7000 nanometer wide, and water molecule is 0.3 nanometer. If you think about only water molecule, it is around 0.3 nanometer. Three Armstrong basically. Human hair thickness is 80,000 80, nanometers. So if we get some idea about this one, so this is the one part. If we take one glucose is basically, if we forgot about the taller uh, below part, and if we have a tennis ball, it is a 10 to the 8 nanometer. And then if we have cell, it is around 10 to 5, 10 to the 5 to 4 nanometer virus, which is coronavirus, everything, whatever the virus we are talking, it is around 100 nanometer in size. DNA is around 10 nanometer size, protein almost less than 10 nanometer size, and all the water, glucose, this molecule, it is less than 1 nanometer size, 1 nanometer size. Now, if we think about the DNA, so if somebody wanted to take, if it is very common word that, yeah, 
if I told my son, if my wife, you know, if my son is doing some bad behavior or some wrong thing, he told that Papa pe gaya hai. Means it is in, in his DNA that in my son DNA that if Papa aisa badmaasi karta tha, isliye hi aisa hua. So and the size of the DNA is only 10 nanometers. So only 10 nanometers. And my most of the time the father parents activity or whatever it carried through generation to generation. And if we think about that, we are talking knowingly or knowingly that we are talking about the only the whatever the body we have the 180 kilogram weight and lot of thing is there in our body. But we are talking about the one single DNA property. One or 10 nanometer nanometers particles, the DNA molecules can create lot of things which cannot imagine, which is very, and which is detecting his behavior and everything. So it is a very common part. And similarly, that's why we talk the nanometer is very important. Long back, it is already there, but it is now discovered and it is a new, new part. And for this technology purpose, we need, as I am a chemist, so we need to make some materials. Without some materials, we cannot do it. If I want to make a tennis ball also, we need to make a tennis ball first. And virus, whatever, the coronavirus, whatever is there, if we think about this one, whatever the virus is there, it is the virus. <coughs> if, we, it is, if it is a man-made, we have to create the virus. To make the antivirus, we have to make the antivirus. So around all are around 100 nanometer size. So some materials is required to synthesis. So nanomaterials could be defined as material is less than only one dimensional because whatever the dimension we have, we have the three dimensional picture. At least one dimension should be in the nanometer range. And it cannot be seen in naked eye. We need some instrument to think, know this one. Nano so surface coating and this thing, this is a not very, uh, if we think uh, make a van like structure, one dimension, I have told the two dimension, one dimension is nanometer, and we can say the nano vats or nano tube. If this is a different way to talk about now, this last part, the quantum dots, this is a very important and of this topic. All now nanometer is a very, a lot of materials are in nanomaterials, nano sense, we can say the nanometers, but we that difference of the quantum dots it is mostly scientific term that we will discuss now which is create the specific one and all nanometers are not the quantum dots now if i say that quantum nano science and whatever the science related to synthesis and application of application synthesis and know the property of the nanomaterials it is called the nano science and the application part is called the nanotechnology this is the two part how we can apply it. now nanomaterials are why nanomaterials are different Okay, why it is different than other plant materials? So, to uh, are, uh, are you able to see my uh, me inside? So, I can show something. So, let us assume, as we are all teachers, so I have we are using we are we are using chalk, we are using chalks to write in the board. So let us assume if I take one chalk and want to cover the whole skin, whole board, one, two, I can arrange all these things. But if we up make a small dust particle, we can easily cover with less materials using the smaller particles. So size is very important to reduce the amount of the materials. If we make the nano that I will tell you now, and then I call told the quantum dot. Basically, it is a quantum confinement effect. So what the confinement effect that I will tell now. So now I have talk about the size. So let us assume this is the cube I have taken. Okay. This is the surface area. What is the surface area is that six meters square. This is a one meter cube. Now I just consider one cube. This is the surface area. Now I divide the eight edge surface area between eight edge. So whatever the surface area between 12 meters square. Now you find the given. This is now I put it the small, small one, half half meter. I just cross it that card is different meter. Then surface area become um, 6 into 1 by half meter square into 8. If you, I have taken the 8 edge, so what is the 12 m square now? So, what well, you can see the 12 m square, the same cube, whatever the cube I have, uh, this is the 1 meter cube, has surface area 6 meter square. Okay, 1 meter cube has surface area 6 meter square. Now, I break the same, same cube with 8 parts and I get 12 meter square. 
Now, if we think that I will make that cube in very small, small nanometer size, then how much increase? It is increase in thousand times increase of the surface area. So now, if I want to paint my wall uh, or home wall or office wall, whatever the if I use the bulk materials, I need lot of materials because it will cover a lot. It will its surface area is less. But if we, I use the nanometers, very small nanometers, then I will need very little amount of materials, and I can cover all the edges of this material. Okay. And second is the quantum confinement effect that is important with the size of this particle now i put you in a cage okay now whatever the cage size is that totally exact value of your size we cannot move go outside or inside whatever you cannot move inside this it is very fixed no extra place is there very close packed now if i just reduce the size so basically if we think that i am cutting a big molecules and bake it bake it bake it bake it make it small so what you have and when it is very small, just like atomic state. Again, if I want to cut this one, then it will just jump. So it will give some different different change in their structure, and it will give some very good optical property, which is highly specific about its cutting. And it is called the quantum confine. I am confined the molecule in such a way that it cannot move, it cannot do anything. Whatever I will predict, that he will do. So that will we get the very accurate thing from this quantum if we are able to make this control size. This is the size controlling. So properties of nanometers I can define from the nanometers. It is a different for the bath materials. Okay, nanostructure material crystalline, but they should be crystalline. Means if I have a cube, that should be in small molecules. Whatever the small part I will take, that is also be cube. It is not the some different color. I am not for it. Is not like powder, other powder. Otherwise, this property will be changed. So now, physical property it is always changed. Crystal structure, as I told, us, was same as the bulk structure with different lattice parameter. The spacing of whatever that is short range core repulsion, the melting point then decrease with this decreasing size. If I just now, if we think about the melting point, physical property, if we think that melting point, it decreasing because this is size is small so lot of surface area if we want to heat these materials so very less is required to get it heated because this surface is small and very molecular is small so not it is easy to penetrate inside and melt the molecule water molecule so if i take a small if we, we have you can use it in the if you take the ice cube big ice cube and press it to melt it it take time it is hard but if we have a very small cube, we can have press it and it will melt. So pressure, that time I am using the pressure to melt this one. So melting point will be different. The chemical property, the chemical property always change that we will take a uh, tell about the electronic property about that one. So if we think about the electronic property and that will, uh, that will I will decide that we are talking about the graphene, graphene oxide, they are the semiconductor, but highly conducting. And generally, in where we are using the copper wire, whatever the electricity purpose, we are using the copper. So as a copper is a room temperature metallic metal, and it is a conducting of the electricity. Now, what we are doing that we can make the graphene. Graphene is a one kind of carbon. Carbon, and if we burn me, you will get the carbon. If we just control burn me, if we able to burn my hair or whatever the waste part of my material, and then if we burn it, and you will get the carbon. And if we able to controlling the if we plan the burning and we will make the conducting carbon or graphene graphene and that will be used for the materials for the conducting purpose electric carrier electric property geometry is the size depending upon i can make it two dimensional i can make it three dimensional i can make it one dimensional then i will take the dots i will take the two dimensional i will this sheet nano wire or nano sheet or if we take the three dimensional then i will take a nano cube or whatever the all this purpose so that is different, whatever I want to do. So I have told the electronic structure is different, density is conducted, is changed. If I have the more density cluster size, I have different electronic structure, different energy levels separation. This is the all different kind of electrical property. Now say the magnetic property. Here I have given the property if we have the magnetic materials, then if we see the ferromagnetism, if we call the word the ferromagnetism, then it is just like, like some code similarity is there. If we see in there, there is some code similarity in the red, red, whatever the pink line is there. 
Now, if we have the paramagnetism, means it is a paramagnetic material, the green line is there. So, ferromagnetic material, because if we take a bulk material, there are a lot of small, small molecules is there. So, if we arrange them, it will take time. So, it is a close fact. It will take time to arrange in the magnetic field direction. At the end, it will take time to rearrange again if I remove the magnetic field. So, some amount of magnetic property remain in the material. That is called the magnetic property. Now, if I make the small molecules, as what is it, I call the super paramagnetism, then they are small molecules. They can easily rotate. They are small, not a bulk molecule. So, they can easily rotate. If I ap applied field, they can rotate in the applied field direction. If I just remove, remove the field, they can just change their direction and they can randomly rearrange accordingly. So, then we will get the blue line. So, there should not be a zero field. If we have no magnetic field, then it is zero non-magnetic. But if we have the magnetic field, easily it will get magnetic and easily it will get diamagnetic. So this is the property which can be achieved only with the nanomaterials, not with the bulk material, the super paramagnetic material. The optical property, why I get the different, different color materials. So this is the different property that I have given you the picture of the, uh, the first picture, the black one is under UV light. If you see that, if I able to control the size and shape, we can get the visually color change the AP, uh, right hand side we can see the visual color change top one is the gold nanoparticles so the, sorry right, in left side this is the cadmium selenide quantum dot we can get the specific color whatever the color i want i will get only that color if i able to make that set that kind of and that size materials i have the bulk cdt uh, quantum dot cdt and or maybe it is a gold. If I say about gold materials, if I able to control their size and shape, the top uh, right side top picture is the uh, size control using the size control, and the below part is the shape control. And this side we can, if we able to make the different shape particles, we get the different. This is optical image. We get the different good different kind of particles with different color, and this color is very specific. That's why we got the quantum dot TV. And we use the quantum dot. So we are get the only if we want to get the only green, the specific green color. We can control the size of the material so that if I use that material, we use only the green color, not the blue, red, whatever the green is nothing. We will get all the pure green and single wavelength. That second B picture, what is the B small B picture, the second wavelength. Okay. Now as I told the application of nanomaterials, this is the different kind of application we have. Okay. So, uh, filler, uh, means in chemical industry, magnetic fluid, different type of catalyst that we will present to filter energy source, fuel cell. We need a fuel cell, solar cell, battery, capacitor is another one which we are, we are using now. If we have, think about the total we are using, the battery, whatever the battery you are using where, as a in the low pollutant vehicle. The problem is the whatever the total the battery vehicle we have that the battery easily drained because the road condition the road condition if the road condition is not good then what will happen that that whatever the battery it is drained we use it the battery the uh, battery the main property of the battery is that it will slow discharge not the quick discharge the discharge is very slow so if you have a charge in one hour it is charging so quick charging in battery quick charging and slow discharge so whole day if we charge for one or two hours whole day it will give you the energy if you give the uh, uh, battery yeah, and if we give it if, if there is an application in battery but if we have the super capacitor or capacitor the super capacitor or capacitor is that one the charging time is small also, as well as discharging time. So, when we are planning to, ISRO is planning to yeah, put the, the, the satellite, to put the satellite in the satellite, but throw the satellite, then use the supercapacitor. What is the application of capacitor or supercapacitor? It will give very instantly, it will discharge, but it will give a lot of energy so that it will give the high speed one. So when the road condition is bad or where is there is a road, or if you think about natural life, there is a big kind of what is the um, uh, road breaker. Then if I use the super capacitor, that will give the that will give the energy to cross this one easily. So battery. Then again, whenever it is smooth, it will go by the battery one. 
and then battery will charge the capacitor for further purpose. So it is a cyclic process. That's why I told that if we use table the battery and supercapacitor in cyclic manner, then it will be easy and we will get the longer time or good speed of a toto because we in generally we if we are in hurry, we don't want to take the toto in common method. We generally go for the till now, we will go for the uh, we'll go for the auto or car or something. But because the speed, we know that it is very slow and, and but if we want to make a good speed one, so we can have to think about the capacitor. So, and in sun protection scheme, if whatever the sun protection scheme you are using, most of them are using the zinc oxide. Previously, it was they are using zinc oxide and TiO2 most of the time. Toothpaste, we are using TiO2 zinc oxide. Now they are using nanomaterials to use and on cosmetics, they are using the uh, nanomaterials, nano TiO2. And so less amount is required, more effective. Mm, that will affect more because their band gap is specific for the sun gap absorption. So it will absorb the sunlight and reduce the accordingly, it will reduce that one. So it will not affect your skin. So this is the automotile lightweight contact uh, construction. If we have the automobile industry, painting, I told you about discuss about the sensor. That today I will discuss about most of the time in the sensor part. But lightweight construction, if we think about, just think about that development of nanotechnology in such a way that previously we have a, we are using computer for 90s, from 90s. In that time, the hard drive, the we have the memory, 156 MB, then 512 MB memory, and that time the pen drive size is big and capacity is 1, one GB maximum. Now we are getting the small size pen drive having the uh, more than five, uh, 520, uh, 500, more than around 400, 550 GB, 500 GB pen drive. We're having the small size. Similarly, now all in one laptop, no CPU is required. Most of there is no CPU, only one, one desktop monitor and that backside there is a CPU, very small. So size becomes small, we get a lot of space. And this is the development of, you can see the nanotechnology. You are making the small materials, small device that will act faster, more useful. So no big space is required, only a small space, small spin that can easily carry and we can use fire that will solve the purpose. Now we have the use the RAM is more than 16 GB, I think 16 or 32 GB RAM any poor computer have. And previously it is, but size is same or maybe less. 50 GB RAM size is less. But now in if we think about the uh, previous, there is a big RAM, only the 2 GB, 500 MB RAM, like lacking that one. So it is slower. So we are fast going faster and faster using the nanotechnology. Similarly, in medicine, drug delivery system, if we have think about the nanometers application of the fe 34 nanomaterials now used for the cancer treatment also to monitor the MRI contesting agent. If we have the cancer, if we, anybody has the cancer or something, they have to do the MRI. In MRI previously, they are using the ruthenium complex that is very toxic. So radio, till now we are using most of the most of the cancer, but that's why we need the radiotherapy to remove the toxicity. But now we are using non-toxic AP304 nanometrials and for two purposes, it is already FDA has approved that we can use that one, two cancers, it means for the liver and some, uh, I cannot even remember, the, I think the liver cancer or something, they can use now the medicine, nanomaterials as a medicine. So rapid test, now nanometer due to coming, in, we all know that rapid testing kit instantly using the nanometrials, we can use the nanometrials and we can use easily the, the, get the detection of virus or whatever the bacteria effect is. So this is the part and now while how we will prepare the nanomaterials one is a physical method another is the chemical method ball mining physical method means ball mining means just ball mining very easy process for bath to make a smaller sputtering and other different chemical methods are chemical vapor deposition chemical reaction in chemistry lab we are doing electro deposition these are different kind of nanometers we can prepare so now if i think about the nanotechnology it will prevent, this is the prevent waste, design safer chemical and product, safer chemicals, all in the green chemistry part. Use catalyst, avoid chemical derivative, minimum, minimum the size and one minute. Minimum the atomic economy, 
you safer solvent reaction condition increase the energy efficiency all this minimize the potential for accidents this kind of things are possible and this is the in environmental water purification agriculture science all i will discuss one by one how it will help nanotechnology help to make a greener world food energy textile industry automotive industry if different industry we can use the nanomaterial to make a greener world so if we think about the nanotechnology for energy now what is that we have the if we had the hydrogen fuel cell if we all know about the hydrogen fuel cell if we want to make a car with the hydrogen as a fuel then only water will generate the production will be water and water is not toxic we all know so if we have the hydrogen source and let us assume we have the hydrogen source and air we have so we can use some new membrane so that it will create energy this is called nanotechnology for energy formation so we have a good membrane so that it will divide this anode and cathode so that the reaction will take place and we will get the fuel from hydrogen we get the hydrogen fuel and this is called the hydrogen fuel cell if now the problem is that for this purpose also if it looks very easy we have a hydrogen cylinder then air cylinder keep it on my car and that will form pipe it will come and make a battery and we will run but then again question is how we will generate the hydrogen from where we will generate the hydrogen in greener manner we have to generate the hydrogen in greener way we have to store the hydrogen material hydrogen is very very lightweight and if we just burn it will burn if we just in air it may be burned so we have a storage material that also requires some nanotechnology to make a storage container so that it will not burn it will be get the pure one so different lot of technologies related to each other to get the energy so this is our hydrogen now if i want to produce hydrogen later then we have the nanomaterials of mg hydrogen too hydrogen will come and hydrogen will come and oxygen organic pollutant or organic polymer with selective gap permeability so we have a membrane now if now we have get the pure hydrogen free from the oxygen what will happen we take a magnesium metal nanoparticle later then we take a magnesium nanoparticle hydrogen will come oxygen also will come what will happen that oxygen will go back water will go back it is not able to come inside this is the filter if we think about the filter of magnesium nanoparticle so hydrogen will come comes through comes through and then we just heat it then we get the pure hydrogen this is the pure right side we have the pure hydrogen this is the impure hydrogen oxygen water or nitrogen whatever so in that way you can make the pure hydrogen this is a correlated this hydrogen now we can use here not the previous this left side hydrogen we cannot use that one only the right side whatever the hydrogen you know, we can use is here so to get the hydrogen one now if we talk about the water i told about the talk about the water this is the use of the water in this the indian data we have the 70% of our uh, 75% of our covered with water but only the 3% of water that fresh water only 3% and now in every day what we are using you can see that using fresh water agriculture it is 7% person per day 135 liter hospital per bed for 40 liter school college person per day 45 liter so industry domestic agriculture you can see in that graph and drinking tea cooking for bathing all this kind of thing is there so we are using this kind of water we are daily not wasting we are not we are again talking about the using every day and now out of water the fresh water first one is the three percent is the fresh water fresh water and out of three percent only one plus three water is drinkable and in in only one percent three percent from three percent to one percent one percent to and out of that we are wasting 95 percent so think that how we are wasting the water how to prepare the water at least we can reduce the waste what we can do it and how to pure purify the water can we make the three percent more than more water at least fresh water we can have to make it five percent can we do it that we have to think so this is the first part of the basic what we are the can relation between the yeah, nanotechnology and the, what is called the green technology now in that field, whatever I have discussed in that field, what is my contribution or what my little contribution towards this field that we will 
Him narrow to me what is my contribution if I will decide. I will show you now in my friend that, that you can think and you can also do maybe in your research field you can contribute in that way also because all the work is not a very highly scientific one but it is easily easily accessible easily work only you have to think how to think positive and you can do it so first we are talking about the water okay in water mercury is a one of the great pollutants those who are taking the non-veg fish everything they are taking mercury from water every day and if the child with the acodinia from the mercury poisoning it happens hmm. as you mercury so it will basically nervous system it will keep your brain damaged so ultimately this is a one of the polluted we don't know it is coming from the medical waste industrial waste now in all over the world most of the most of the European country, America, if we are using mercury thermometer, you will you don't get first of all you don't get there a mercury th use thermometer, and if you able to use it, uh, you will get the prison and lot of fine will be there. They have stopped using mercury, but still we are also you are still we are we are also still not using digital. Most of the time we are using the mercury thermometer, and if the thermometer breaks, then all mercury it come in the soil. And it is a pollution. So this kind of pollution, how to remove that one? That we will think for green purpose. Why we need to make as as less in less instrument involved. It should be the user friendly so that everybody can use. But oh, sorry, it is a fluoride. I just okay. It, it should be the mercury. Okay, this is, should be the mercury process. Whatever the we use, use that should be the uh, non toxic low cost, easy to use, and it can be reusable, try to, and it is a very small detection. If we think about the mercury detection technique in literature, we will get a, people are using the light, under the UV light, is organic molecules, it will react with mercury, it gives the color change. And we have to purchase this compound or synthesize this compound, and then we have to get this one to check. This is the most of the time we are using the organic molecules. So, Previously, it is in under UV light, it's colorless, and then it will come color. If we, if in water, we have the mercury. But problem, and then another one is the gold or silver nanomaterials. If they are also using the nanomaterials, if there is a mercury, then it will give some color change. It is a give some color change. So if you see the B, C, D, a color change. So there are a lot of people are using mercury, different molecules, organic, small molecular molecules, Sometimes big organic molecules, some nanomaterials, different nanomaterials to get the color change so that in visual eye, in naked eye, we can get the color change of the uh, color change. And we can say that if before drinking the water, I take the one of the whatever the glass we have, I take the one ml of less than uh, 0.5 ml of water, put it in my detector and see if there is color change. Then we can say that there is no mercury. And if it is color change to red to uh, red to blue, then we can see that we have a mercury, so it should not eat this drinking water. And so no instrument. They use the gold nanoparticles. So although this color is not very visible, but gold and also the cadmium selenide, we have already told, already told that we uh, already told that mercury can be detected with the quantum dot CDT. But here is the CDT zinc sulfide is not so useful because they are also CDT, AC is a toxic one, cadmium selenide is a toxic particle, so we should not, we try to avoid this one. So if we have the light, this is the another one, very big molecules, costly molecules, and mercury, we colorless, so we get the green color molecule. So different silver nanoparticles or different, they are using and different, different nanoparticles, you will get the color change if there is a mercury in there. Now what we have done that, we have taken the Cheetosin molecule. Cheetosin is very common. It's very common. And silver nitrate in chemistry, BSC lab also, we get the silver nitrate and sodium borohydrate. We just use one pinch, say 0.5 mg, 0.5 mg of sodium borohydrate solution, aqua solution, take silver nitrate, Cheetosin, mix it, use the, pour the sodium borohydrate into that, we get the yellow color solution, whatever the solution. Now, in naked eye, if you see that, it will detect the mercury colorless. Copper also, after some time, we can see that copper is become colorless. Iron also become colorless. 
so it is not specific but in iron in drinking water we should have some iron no. so it will detect not specific so our target is not solved and it takes some time so we take within one minute it is colorless with the mercury but 10 minutes or after 10 minutes we get the color change of Fe plus 10 copper plus 2. Now we just modified that one and make some some modification, some organic modification, small reaction one just hit it this two, we get this compound and we will get we will just use the same method to get this thiol carbonate copper particle. Then we observe that within five seconds, this is the last from the last right side, we have get a colorless one and only for mercury ion. Visually, we can get this one. But if there is all other ions, it will not give the color change. So yellow to colorless. Within a five seconds, we get the colorless solution. So if I have if I give you the one drinking water to drink, if we have the this sensor, you will take one minute sir, please. I, I take 0.5 ml of water, I put it in my solution, colorless. Okay, thank you, sir. I don't drink this one. It is a mercury containing sir. But how you carry? You cannot carry the bottle of the solution. I will make a gel. It is a gel kind of thing, solid one. You just take out the gel and put the drop on into the gel. This is the, this is the second part. If you see the second picture, this is the first picture of the, the ketosine and this is the second picture. Only the mercury, there is mercury. It fits, then you don't dig this water and you will get that. Finally, water. So, and we can detect 5 ppb mercury can be detected. If how small of mercury is there, then it can be detected in there. So, we can say that, and not only the detection, now it's think that we have some mercury in water. How we can purify the water? Next question is the how we can purify the water. Not, if the detection is okay, but how we can purify, we just use the change the pH of the solution, that whole mercury solution from second test tube to third test tube, or get precipitated. Just change some amount of pH. Acidic to some basic means 7.4 or something. We will get precipitated of the mercury and whatever the solution I am, whatever the detector I am using. Then filter it, take the pure water. That's all. Only this part is okay and we will get the pure water from my uh, and we can use the mercury. So it is a specific Fast response, non-toxic, low cost, easy use, potential, potential detection limit. All are very good for the mercury. So we are able to go for the we are able to remove the mercury from waste water or from waste water or drinking water, whatever we can we have. We have tried this in all the pond or every sample, and we will get the similar data, not only in laboratory, in large scale also. Now what we can do that we can make the graphene oxide i told you the quantum dot we can use you make it very easily you take the, the whatever i have taken because in in my next my laboratory i have some neem neem uh, leaf, uh, tree and i have taken the neem leaves there always carry out the neem leaves there so i took that i take the neem dead neem leaves and burn it first wash it and then burn it in argon atmosphere and nitrogen atmosphere and then we just do some modification, nitric acid or uh, aqua regions, you know, what kind of highly acidic medium we can reflect, we get the graphene quantum dot. And then what we had to do that, this is the graphene quantum dot left side, and then we characterize, we see that there is an acid group, we did use it the ammonia and make it 200 degree for some hour, the ammonium gas, and we get the ammonium target graphene oxide. And this is the true color. So I can control the color at all time. Most of the time we, we are not using ammonia. It is very common ammonia gas. And then acid we are using and reuse the acid. We can use acid the long time. The same acid mixture I can use for second purpose also. No problem. So we can see the green color. First one is the green color graphene quantum dots. And then we can get the blue color graphene quantum dots. Just only ammonia treatment with ammonia, before ammonia, after ammonia. And we can use that one graphing quantum dots. And cysteine is an essential amino acid, non-toxic. And if we add the cysteine, what will happen that it will increase the for optical property. And if we have the mercury, then it will reduce. So what this is the clear picture. So first we have the blue color 
to us, we add the silver nitrate, take color off. And then system color again. Again, add silver nitrate, color drop. Again, add system color again. So reusable. And in water, in silver, if it, it, it is not very common in water pollutant, but if we intake silver ion, then your skin will be blue. Blue skin error. If we have the blue, then we will be the blue matter. So blue skin error. This is one very critical problem and it is most of the time non-curable. And so, and then it is very big problem for us that how if we very, there is a very little chance of silver in water, but if it is there, then we have to take care of this one. Otherwise, it will, we have, your skin will become blue. So for first, you, this is our sensor in water. What we happen that we take the silver nitrate and it will only instantly color off, no color and no you uh, you will and you will have no color then we want to use that one we take the system again color again we get the color solution blue color we use silver nitrate again and it use properly so first the if we seek the morphology first one this is the first one sample small small dots then we get the compound having some silver inside in this compound there is all that has a sub two component silver and graphene and then again silver again sorry silver and graphene are another one they are separated so we can reuse this one in that way in summary it is very big so we can switch on switch off we can do it the detection of the mercury using where you are what we are using we take the dead neem leaves neem leaves which is basically waste material we can just use as a chemical method in nitrogen atmosphere we burn it to get the carbon then use acid treatment ammonia acid and ammonia treatment we will get the very good detector for mercury ion detection for long time. And whatever the problem is that, okay, we are not able to use the ammonia for long time, but we are able to reuse the acid, whatever we are using, we use it for longer time, for 10 times. At least we can use the acid for 10 times to get product. So this is the green waste for more waste materials. We get the greener synthesis method and water purification. So this one. Similarly, as we have told about the uh, fluoride in Rajasthan, there is a lot of water or fluoride contamination in water. So, what we have made that first we made the cadmium telenoid quantum dot, very green fluorescence, highly fluorescence quantum dot. Then we add U plus T. So, we don't get any color, it becomes colorless. Now, if I add water with the fluoride, this red color is a fluoride ion, then fluoride will react with U plus T and we get the color back of our material. Now we can use again U plus 3 and we can, this one can be separable from the solution. Just filter, so sorry, filter. I can just centrifuge and take it out this one and we get this product. So it is become precipitated and in the solution, the clear green solution, you can take out, reuse it. So this is a small way to make the fluoride free, fluoride free water whatever fluoride free uh, drinking water. So remember that first we have the color, color fluoride ion, color sensor, this is our detector, optical detector. I add U plus T knowingly. So color becomes, I can see the color change. We don't have the color. Then if I, I add the water, if there is a fluoride ion, then it will instantly react with U plus T and got UF3 and precipitate and we get the green color back. And then we take the reuse, the repeat the same process. Second and third, we can repeat this one and we can reuse this one. So in that way, we can use the fluoride, which is the water pollutant, detect. And it is a very bad damage in the bone, knee, teeth, kidney and teeth. So most effective the children, no longer possible the IQ, also the IQ. So will, their IQ will be reduced. So if we have the CDT MPS, whatever the first part, I told you that this is a decrease in the optical property. And if we have the, uh, if we had the fluoride ion addition, it will increase some blue to black. It will come back again. And we can reuse, repeat the two and three, three parts two or three times. This is a morphological change. You can see that whatever the change that I have told us the first one, green color one, green color one, the second one is the with new, there is a contamination everything so color optical property totally gone 
and this the hair is the same picture also of the property totally gone and then whenever i add the chloride ion it will come back again one and two a and b and a and c are the same e and f only c d and b this is the with addition of u this is the sensor colorless this is the green 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 again so in that way this you can see the color in just under uv light cost the 300 300 400 rupees you have in the uv light you can see that only with this one color down first one color off color on but in visual light it is not detectable but for under uv light it is detectable but fluoride is <coughs> another problem is that how much concentration not only the detection limit the lower limit that is important the a higher limit also what happened that i put it in the different highly totally highly concentrated hf film put the sensor in the hf film because fluoride if there is an industry we have heard that in some europe somewhere there is a leakage of the fluoride ion and whole village is totally gone so what the high concentration of fluoride the detector is more stable in that high concentration 100 percent fluoride concentration that we have checked and we check that we just put the hf film and put our sensors there and see that at p72 both of the cases we get the fluoride detection can be possible without destroying they are not destroying high concentration of fluoride not destroying our compound of two so in that way we can uh, this we can say that our compound is highly robust and it can be it, it can be used for uh, high concentration also fluoride industry also so we can able to rapid synthesis of this this thick fluoride ion we can also do it now the main part here if we think about this part we are using the cdt quantum dots and previously i told that it is not very useful or very non-toxic material that when we are doing this one and we're not easy to synthesis also so what 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 we plan that although we are doing some good work for inner work but what happened that we are using some non-toxic material how we can make a non-toxic we can use some non-toxic we are using toxic materials so how we can make this we can do this work using non-toxic materials so this time what we have done that we take the sabudana Basically, this is the eating, eating for eating purpose. Five rupees, we will get this material. This is starch, and we just use K which or anything. We can leave plus for water two year, two hours. You will get this also. Quantum dots, carbon dots, and now you just pull it. So now U plus three. That time we are using U, EU plus three. This time we use Fe plus. Fe plus 3 is commonly available, although it U plus 3 is not very easily available and some costly. So we are using Fe plus 3, another low cost materials, and do the same purpose. So this is our sample. If you see our sample gel form ABC, we cannot see first one is I will tell the carbon dot, second one is the with iron, and third one without and after fluoride addition. You see that one first one you can see the green color second one you can you cannot see the anything in under uv light but see we get the under uv the color back so after pollution after insolution and on microscope if you have a microscope in the microscope also you can see the color change so carbon dot non-toxic material iron plus three non-toxic and detects a toxic so in that way we can able to selectivity we have checked the selectivity and in that way we can selectively sense the <coughs> pl means photoluminescence or under uv light whatever the light within 10 seconds we can detect and we can use a repeat for 10 times the cycle and we will get the similar result so in that way we can detect specific fluoride first day. so it is specific for the fluoride ion first response non-toxic materials we are using low cost materials easy to use provided reproduce later but detection limit what we expected it is not like that we think that we can do some more modification i may be honest there so we can say that we are not getting the whatever the who world health organization prescribe that we are not getting but we are getting 
good result, but not so accurate or soft. So lower detection limit is not so good. Also, it is not highly stable in when we are using the HFTM. So this is the limitation of our that ion detection part. So next, what we can do that iron. Iron is non-toxic. I am telling that non-toxic and non-toxic is a very common term that if I say that I, I have a sugar, let us know I have a sugar patient. So for potato or for um, sugar is um, from potato is for me toxic. But those who don't have the sugar, they don't have need to think about that uh, potato. They can consume lot of potato. So toxic is a different term. So as iron plus is not toxic, we cannot take the iron every day. Uh, we take a glass of iron FACLT solution daily. It's not good. So that's why also if it is not good also, but we have to think about that how to use that and how to detect the iron also. So whatever we take that we take the BSA for this purpose, whatever we take the BSA is a protein, propanated commonly, l ascorbic acid is a basically hydric acid, vitamin C, and take hydrogen peroxide and we get some copper nanocluster. In this is a one kind of nanoparticles, blue fluorescence color. And with this one, we get the <coughs> optical property will change with the addition of F plus two. The synthesis method, the same thing I am drawn in RB. We just put it in that way. First, we put the BSA in water, then copper ascorbic we guess it will insert, then we take the hydrogen peroxide and we get the product. This is the basically characterization data. And you no, know, if you see that one, this after this synthesis, this compound. Is a nanometer size, everything is there. It is highly stable in different temperature. So, optical property is not uh, with time, it is not changing. With temperature, it is not changing. With pH, it is changing. So, it is not only that iron sensing, it can also sense the pH also. I take, make the solution and check the, if I put the solution and check the pH, and if I have the standard graph, it is the pH. I know the pH of the solution easily. So if I don't have the litmus paper, then I can use that one also. Litmus paper is more cheap. So we should use the, this one. And then we are adding the iron plus three and see that very low concentration of iron only, we get the uh, optical property change with only iron. First, the below the picture is the violet, violet color, only we are using the iron. And then we mixed all these, these are different ions and in presence of iron. In absence, black one is in absence of iron, in absence of iron, and red one is the with presence of iron. The linear point from that we get the data from the top B part, we get the data from the linear. If it is a linear, we get the detection limit from there. One. So in that way, we can make we can make the water uh, know the iron concentration of water. So it is not a water pollutant. I am not talking about the water pollutant, but we can say that in that way we can use the remove the water pollutant or not only the iron, it should know the concentration of iron, but with the water in the because in if you see the thing about the distilled water and mineral water, in mineral water we need iron, but in distilled water. We shouldn't. We should not drink distilled water. It will not be helpful for our body. We need the mineral water, and for mineral water, there is a requirement of iron also. Not that we need, no uh, iron too also. So my iron is required, and to know the concentration of iron, our sensor is good enough. Now, if we think about the waste water management that I am talking, I will take the another way. Not only the sensing part, also the catalysis part. In filter paper, we lot of filter. We are using every filter paper in every day in chemistry life, and it is very common. Maybe the other paint that we will, will take that one or cloth also that we will. Then I use as a catalyst. If I use a catalyst, then what will happen that I make some silver solution, silver nanoparticle solution. We might get a filter paper there. This is my catalyst, and this all the organ. This is the organic pollutant. Most of the organic pollutant in chemical can be removed using this compound, using our catalyst, and we can use for 20 times this catalyst. Use, reuse, use, reuse, use, reuse, no problem. 
three types of reaction we can perform with our catalyst. So it is a highly known catalyst, which is a very low cost. See, this is greener method. We are using green that I will modify accordingly. But we are, if we have the made this compound, we can not do, don't need to waste. It is more than I have tested for 20 times, but it is more than I think more than 100 times you can use this compound, whatever I believe. But there are some limitations because after sometimes it will just after watering water, water, it will just uh, broken. And so we have to modify this one. And this is the defined morphology of this compound small silver nanoparticles of the filter paper. It is there. And if we remove the red color, is the remove catalyst without catalyst, no reaction with catalyst reaction. Without no reaction, we can do this thing. Now the problem is that if we use the filter paper, it will after some time it will not good. It is fixable. The advantage of this one this is fixable, so we can use for many surfaces, but it is not use uh, not highly stable for longer purpose or high temperature for different other solvents. So what we have to do that we have to monitor change the soil. We take the glass slide and we deposit the silver on there, and then we are using in that way. We are using lot of reaction organic. Most of them reaction we are carried out is organic pollutant in water, mainly from industry. It is coming. So what we are doing that, uh, what we are doing that we can use a different solvent, high temperature also 120 degree, highly stable, and we use it as a we use it as a <laughs> removal of water pollute for longer time. Highly stable, non-toxic silica glass. We can use this one only. Silver is required. So procedure is that glass slide I'm modified. Okay. Glass slide been modified. Then we just modified the ammonium silica again. The functional silica. We get the ammonia. Then silver. Diff two different procedure. We tried this video, which is more useful. Then and also we can use this, and in that way we can synthesize the power last slide and then you use for further purpose so but this is the another way that if you want to use this compound to know the same thing is the ACS ACS sorry is the Raman technique one of the Raman instrument if we have the Raman instrument because we talk of Professor C.V. Raman got Nobel Prize in India and on his name there is one instrument is the Raman optical imaging instrument now it is a portable Raman is available in market so if we have that small equipment and we can monitor the we can use that instrument to detect the uh, to detect the uh, water pollutant with the both water but this one is the water pollutant first one i mean no2 group as the water pollutant this is non pollutant so we can monitor the water pollutant and we can again we can reduce it the non pollutant one but this problem is that this glass slide is not fixable. We cannot use for different shape particles. So it is not fixability. So fix it to remove the first one, stability problem. The filter paper has a stability problem. Second one has the fixability problem. And but the second one we can use for the sucks also the two different three or two or three different kind of optical uh, instrument we can use to detect that one. So third part, why we have modified that one? We can use the graphene oxide, non-toxic one, and then ponimbine alcohol. This is another non-toxic material. We are always using this one. And so we use this and we make the graphene oxide sheets, modified silver. Then we just technique use a polystyrene fluid using the spin coating technique. Spin coating is a spinning and drop casting, nothing else. And we will get the this kind of material. So whatever that we take first, the spin coated glass like polystyrene, then make one layer of the polystyrene. Then we are silver on this graphene oxide. We drop cast this one, make this compound. Again, we take PVA, so upper layer, another PVA layer. Then another compound PVA. Generally, we use it to make this thick, thick. Make PVA is used for the thicker purpose. Then again, another silver compound, and then vacuum on to get this one. And if we just put it in the organic solvent, the polystyrene, this polystyrene will go off. So top and upper layer we have the silver. This is the compound we have made. There is the visual picture of this compound. Black colored silver materials, highly flexible one. And we this is the morphology. And now we are using this. If I see the scale, eight, one, two, three, four, four centimeter by five centimeter or four point five centimeter cutting we have. Now we can use 
this one highly stable to remove water pollutant from water so in that way this is the another different different morphology you can see the color everything these are the scientific part see the nano this is the nano all other nano materials so 100 micromolar very small small particles these are 200 nanometers small this one one this big one so these are 10 nanometer i think 10 nanometer 10 nanometer particles and this g figure is for the crystallite side and the reproducibility data without catalyst all is given here with this one you can see the color change that i will show you again color change from there UV or visible light also visible you can also see this one without catalyst no pollutant removal with catalyst pollutant removal we get using 10 times and this is the data of the kinetics data similarly methyl orange methyl red both we have the gate same both water to the same result now what we happen that PVA now we have make the PVA or polystyrene we don't want to use that one do the same thing we don't want, want to use it we have to use the silver because silver is the catalyst but we don't want to use whatever have that we have the old cloth we cut the old cloth and do that part so cloth fiber we have the old pet cloth whatever the polish cloth we take the graphene oxide same thing modified the graphene oxide we take it pet cloth put it there again deep coating in the only name the silver nanoparticles so this is our catalyst so this is our catalyst. Now we have used the methyl oil degradation, methyl A degradation, all this non-toxic part. The same water polluted, we can use this one, cloth, on the cloth, used cloth. And if you, if you, see, it, if you see the picture, this is the same picture of this one, our cloth. If you see the D picture, this is our catalyst. Used cloth with silver. It is our catalyst or sensor, whatever you can say that one which I will uh, just keep it I don't want the figure and we can see that morphology here nano particles both other this size is 10 nanometer height means if you look at the AFM image from the height is 6 nanometer now less than 10 nanometer size particles and no change without catalyst with catalyst totally change within 20 minutes removal 20 times reproducible linear data this called reproducible linear data with time all are very good with this one is for the nitrophenol this is the methyl orange data with catalyst defined with methyl orange this is the methyl orange data all are the different different things not only this one but now this one also again we can monitor that now using the Raman spectroscopy we can see this one this is the with time this is the first week this is the toxic one this is from non-toxic materials up. First, we will say no non-toxic amine group, no nitro uh, um, aniline, nitro to amine transfer, no one. So now it is going down, going up, going down, going up, going down, going up, now going down, going up. So with time monitor also the Rama spectrum, so we can do this one. And this is the current result. You can see that one how. We have made some RGO based RGO, graphene means carbon, barium tended is a photocatalyst, if it is a magnetic separator, and silver nanocompose for clean water production. So, what we can do that we can make a clean water. If it's, this is the video we have taken, this is the mixture, only the methyl orange absorption, we get this one, and we take the three component mixture. This is the three component, three different dye in there. And we put it our catalyst, we get the clear one. And if we see there's a real time picture, where right? in the just in the black one, in the, the white one is a cotton, and this is our black both cotton inside our material is there. We put that waste water there and we get the clean water. You can see there. Not only one time. Think where I will show you one minute. This is three times we have done it. I don't know, it is more than one GB. I think three or four. So then remove it again. We put the clean water and we use that one. In that way, easily we can get the water removal. This is the 
currently we are working on that one here the advantage of that the barium titrate whatever happened that this is the absorption then under that light if we put the light it will destroy the pollutant and if it's therefore for that we can use the magnetic separation also and silver is well known as the antibacterial property so whatever the bacteria that i cannot show in the video this has some bacteria in there also or we have put the some e coli bacteria in there and here we have we have done this one this water in below we don't get any e coli so it is antibacterial also now another this is the working already it is under the way i have some data to show that it is already we are working on that one now pesticides is one of the key component to remove that one to create the cleaner world and this is the technique we already have if we go for the amazon or i think it is in amazon we can get the if there is a pesticide you can detect that will really detect the, this is the, in all over world they can use the light or something they can use that one but drawback of there is no affordable in for india so much this is a drawback so what we are doing that how to make we are just last slide we are trying to working in that way so our aim to get the this kind of we just take the water or injection and this is our color detector and finally if we make the color solution like this or mobile like this one this is the work we are also working on to detect the pesticides in real naked eye so that farmers can easily afford and not only pesticide is good for the those who are eating those who are using that was for bad for for them also it is very bad so for us consumer it is bad those who are using this is also toxic for them and they are most of the time they are stored in their home and if there is a pesticide then it is for home for their child it is very bad so you are to make a detector like this so that we ultimately we can make that kind of sensor this is a collaborative work with the ev what we are doing now similarly another sensor we air quality monitoring we all know that is a toxic work that whatever the ozone this is the carbon dioxide all the nox gas are the very toxic one and acid rain always we want to make oxygen and this is the 2009 not before corona because before corona we have the picture in some swimming jargon for that for that due to the pollution they put the mask on the blood sieve also but pm5 pm2.5 if you use the mask just like corona virus we can get this one <clears throat> we can remove that one and this is the main if you think about this is the road map this is our department chemistry department totally green inside is totally green but outside it is very pollutant very pollutant yeah this is just outside air yeah, pollution lot of air everything is there in that day of 7th or 6th we are also problem to take a good breath we are we also face some problem for breathing although we are also in the green campus we can say that our campus is very clean green and we have inside green campus we face no problem but outside we face the problem but that day we face a lot of problem inside also only 10 minutes 2.8 kilometer but we can monitor if we have any detector in anywhere that we can this small distance we will get the average data we cannot get the data of the accurate in the acquisition department of chemistry data or that data so we need a accurate measurement technique so that wherever we are we take the water a balloon blow the balloon and use that balloon and use that data so that we can get the polluted not only that corona virus but also the pm also the other polluted we can detect this is a different technique different market is available is there availability always i am not saying that i am doing but they are not if you see the price 81 8 815 345 470 dollars 8500 roughly air quality monitor so this is the high cost equipment is available but it's still missing we are trying to make this one so in that is our scheme we are working in that one similarly we can make like bluetooth device so that in mobile we can able to do it 
this is the work I am doing. I am working on this one, but in future of green nanotechnology, already nanotechnology for greener car is market is coming in that electric vehicle and solar fuel vehicles already are coming in the market. I can also in the drug delivery system in medicine. I am not talking about the medicinal part, but if there is a medicine. We are using the nanotechnology so that nano robotics, it is called nano robotics, that will go inside your cell and do the operation, everything, and take it out, automatically take it out. So, we have to put the nano robot in that cell so that it will detect the virus. This is the virus, they detect it, they cure laser light or whatever, they cure that one, then come out. They will come inside and detect this one. This is a nano thing. And also, as I told that already, that not only the car, this is the first drive that BMW has already a flying car. They have tested in air for from a, around 100 kilometers. They use the battery, green technology, green battery, and use that car to move. And now Tesla is plan is in Tesla in one of the biggest company in the world. They are planning to make a use flight using the battery. They are trying to make a battery so that that battery can be used not only the fuel then in the flight. And flight is no fuel, fossil fuel is required then. So this is the future of the science. What we can change then. Before I finish, I just say my past students, my present students, those are working with me, my funding agency, and my collaborators, my friends. Big thanks all to this kind of work and I am now ready to take some questions if you have any